Man, let me tell you something. I I, I'm, I, I rewatched the trailer because Oof. I was just like I had seen the trailer uh, like a couple weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago. It hasn't been out that long, I think. And then I was like, wow, Nicolas Cage doesn't talk in the whole trailer. He just screams. There's you don't hear him actually. Other people talk, but Nicolas Cage doesn't doesn't speak in the trailer. He just screams. Yep. Um, it's not just the trailer, my friend. Not to not to spoil the whole thing for you, but uh, yeah, I. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, I was trying to see how many movies I could cram in for this review, and uh, you know, like I, I like saw what was new out there, and uh, I was like, oh wow, this Nicolas Cage movie. Like I, I thought I saw the press release for them talking about this movie for the first time like two months ago. So I was amazed that this movie was already available to rent. And so I, like a dumbass, went to Voodoo and spent $20 of my own hard-earned money oh my to God. give to give us this podcast a uh, exclusive so we could spread the word to not rent this movie because, <laughs> uh, you know, shocker, it is not worth $20. It is, uh, is very much not. I would not spend uh, any money on this. I would not... Um, what about five bucks? No, nah, I would not. I would not waste no. your time to see it for free. It's uh, it's probably not the worst Nicolas Cage movie ever made, but this is definitely. I don't even know if this is like a tax shelter, like left behind level movie, but um, uh, this is it's very clear. This is one of those movies that like Nicolas Cage filmed on a Tuesday between like lunch and Pilates. And, you know, if anything, I found it encouraging because it made me really confident. Like, you know, if you and I started a GoFundMe. Of mm-hmm. just us, like, hey, we want to sit on a, the couch drinking beer with Nicolas Cage, and we raised like three hundred thousand dollars to get him in for an afternoon. Like, we could do it because it, it clearly is like they were, some people raised enough money to get Nicolas Cage to shoot with them for four days, and then they just constructed this whole plot around it. And yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, you know, the the plot's really easy to sum up. Uh, Nicolas Cage is a guy that does not speak at all in this movie. Um, really? Yeah, he's, uh, it, it, you know, the plot, the movie, like, the thing that sucks about the movie is it's basically, you know how, like, Nicolas Cage is cool when he's not trying to lean into the Nicolas Cage-iness? Or, like, you know, whenever anything tries to be a meme, it just comes off as incredibly, I don't know, like, cloying and, and uh, patriotic patronizing or something it's just very Mm -hmm. very uh, annoying that's basically this whole movie in a nutshell it doesn't take itself seriously as a movie at all it barely holds up i like barely would call it a film but uh basically the plot is nicholas cage is this guy who's like you know random stranger who's driving a really nice car in the middle of the desert and he comes across this small town and his tire his car gets a flat because it runs over one of those like police uh speed trap things those tire flattener things or whatever mm-hmm. um and it's really weird he doesn't say anything it's kind of reminded me of a you know the protagonist of gta 3 how you're a guy that's kind of mute that just goes from person to person doing jobs is that the one where you're like a or you're like a russian dude no, no, living in queens no no it's is like that... gta 3 like the first one that like everyone played oh, oh, you know yeah. like how you don't say like anything. liberty city New York yeah or yeah that? that but like the whole thing like before they started getting voice actors like it's like oh here's your assignment you just like kind of nod and, you know, mm-hmm. like, that's basically Nicholas Cage in this. He's a, he's a cool dude who has no, his one character trait is he likes to drink this, like, I don't know if it's soda or punch or beer or something like that. It looked like a monster energy drink yeah. or something from the trailer. He, like, he has, like, a suitcase filled with it Yeah, like, his trunk is filled with this case of, it's something punch. You, like, they cut to it a bunch of times over and over again. And it's, like, basically... Yeah, so his 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 car breaks down. Um, the mechanic in the small town is basically like, "Oh, hey, you know, we're gonna have to replace all your tires. Oh, we don't have ATMs around here, and we don't have internet, and you don't have cash. So tell you what, here, um, I'll, I got a job for you. If you clean out this essentially Chuck E. Cheese overnight for us. I'll fix your car up for you for free and you can leave in the morning or something like that. So, oh, so the other thing is like, this is um, very clearly like a riff on like five nights at Freddy's, uh, you know, that video game. I was going to ask, cause I know what five nights at Freddy's is, 
but like because I shopped at a Target once and like all the toys are fr- Five Nights like and like uh, the apps and stuff. Yeah. But what is Five Nights at Freddy's? It's, is it a game? Yeah, so it's this game. It's this actually like really great game that I think they're doing another adaptation of. Like that's actually specifically for that IP, or they might even be doing another one. I thought I read something about like Seth Rogen doing a Chuck E. Cheese version of this. It's all kind of riffs on the same idea. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's is you are a get a job as a security guard at uh, something that's like an old Chuck E. Cheese sort of thing, and uh, it's all first person. And the whole gimmick is you're sitting at a control station, and you have security cameras all around the building, and you check different rooms with your security camera. You have like a limited amount of battery, so you can only check in certain rooms for a certain length of time before your battery runs out. So you have to conserve it. But like, uh, you basically notice that the robots in certain rooms start moving. So like you'll see a robot, like you check around in different rooms and then you'll notice that a robot's gone and you have to find the room that the robot's in and close the doors remotely for it before it gets to you or you'll have a giant robot monster come and eat you. And it's really cool because it's atmospheric. It really plays into that whole thing of like, these are mechanical monsters with like cute teddy bear, you know, uh, coverings or whatever. I thought, yeah, because I thought it was like a puppet master where like little guys are coming out. Oh no, 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 they're big. They're like human size. Oh, they're big. So, you know, it's basically okay. it's Chuck E. Cheese. Like that's the whole gimmick is like, what if Chuck E. Cheese monsters came alive and fucking chased you? So, so, and that's really cool. But the thing, you know, that's a really integral part of that is like they are clearly robots with this thin skin of like, you know, bear costume or whatever. Um, but this movie, this fucking Willy's Wonderland, like the, clearly the, the budget for this movie that like wasn't Nicholas Cage was like five bucks or whatever. So like, like the quote unquote Chuck E. Cheese robots are just clearly people in shitty Halloween costumes or whatever. So it's not even like, you get the, oh, there's a monster chasing you. It's like, oh, there's a guy in a shitty bear costume or ostrich costume or something like that. Fake fighting Nicolas Cage. And, like, there there isn't even, like, an attempt to do anything resembling tension or whatever. Um, uh, but, yeah, so basically what happens is... Um, uh, just I'll lay out the whole, whole thing for you, like uh, yeah, because I, I was curious, like who are these kids that are like warning him, like trying to save him? Yeah, so so basically, because Nicolas Cage is ostensibly the main character, but he cannot speak, you they suddenly throw in all like seven other kids, like that are your you know typical boilerplate you know horror movie cast or whatever to to basically do all the speaking for Nicolas Cage and kind of explain the plot. But they mm-hmm. there's a main girl who is obsessed with trying to burn this this building down like when the movie starts she's trying to burn the building down and the mom from donnie darko uh or the sparkle motion lady uh she's in this as the town sheriff and so she's like the adoptive mom of this girl and she like pulls her away as she's about to torch the place and says like hey you know like stop doing that that's not good uh and basically so this girl escapes and gathers all her friends and they all get together to try to like uh, demolish this place once and for all. And you find out like there's some, they, they talk about it briefly, but it's like this place used to be like a serial killer owned this tr- essentially Chuck E. Cheese franchise and would take lure kids in back for private birthdays and would slaughter them or something like that. And then when the cops were coming to find them, they did a, a satanic ritual. Just throw them in the ball pit. You know, like, yeah, it was like one of those Chucky uh, plots. Like, you know, they did a satanic ritual, so now their souls are in these evil Chuck E. Cheese monsters, and, you know, the town has to keep on firing, uh, finding new people to lure into this Chuck E. Cheese establishment so to feed the monsters, otherwise the monsters will attack the town people. It, it, it's so dumb. Um, and uh, But, you know, like, so, like, you have a bunch of teens in it that all kind of like get killed off one by one. And then, but, but it's weird because you have these teens, which are doing most of the work for, for the movie, but like you still have Nicholas cage in the movie and you need to like work him in somehow. So you don't really understand why, but Nicholas cage is like a very dedicated worker. Like, you know, they basically give him this assignment. He does not question anything. He, they basically are like, you know, you know, clean, clean up everything, you know, make sure to take lots of breaks and we'll be there in the morning. So he's like, most of the movie is just these montages of him, like wiping down cabinets and stuff like that. And, uh, and then, um, 
then he takes breaks every once in a while where his his watch goes off and he's got to chug a, this this drink or whatever and then he plays pinball and then he maybe fights a you know stuffed animal monster and then he goes back to the same old thing and it's so he he fights an animal he fights a robot monster and then continues to yeah clean? he's like totally unfazed he doesn't like oh, yeah wow. and it's it's weird to the point like you know it hits a point where it's such a gag where it's even like Nicolas Cage is getting ready to fight a monster. Like he, he eventually links up with the teenagers and like, you know, he's helping them kind of, but you know, there's a scene where him and one of the girls is about to get attacked by a monster and he's getting ready to help her. But then his watch goes off and he realizes it's time for, you know, drinking soda and pinball again. So he just runs off and leaves the girl to fend for herself or whatever. (laughs) And it's very clear. Like, I guess they did this so, hey, we can shoot Nicolas Cage playing pinball for a little bit and drinking soda, and we can just keep on reusing that footage over and over. And they they do this thing like four or five times throughout the whole movie, and uh, it's really weird because they keep on seeming to set up like the place where my brain was going to was like, oh, is Nicolas Cage like a robot? Like, is this soda he's drinking like you know fucking oil or something like that? Like. It would make as much sense as just about anything else in this movie, but um, but they never go into that. He's just some dude. He's just a badass, Nicolas Cage. Um, and yeah, it doesn't really have any cool conclusion or whatever. It's basically like all the teens, except for the main one, gets killed. Um, Donnie Darko mom gets killed, uh, you know, and they kill off all of the evil monsters and then like ride off into the sunset or whatever. But it's just such a such a nothing burger of a movie, you know? Um, mm. but, uh, but yeah, you know, like I, I uh, I would be excited. I, I, I really actually do hope they are doing a proper five nights at Freddy's kind of movie. Cause I still think, you know, this, that sort of film like has a lot to mine for, you know, just like in terms of good ideas and, uh, you know, this movie, doesn't even register like i've already started forgetting about it so so hopefully hopefully something will come and uh you know just eradicate this idea from the map <laughs> that's too bad i mean honestly i, I saw a rev- it, it didn't get great reviews people were saying it's a waste of nicholas cage mm-hmm. which hard for it doesn't, doesn't sound uh doesn't sound like you would disagree not at all i i definitely think it's a uh, you know i know nicholas cage is kind of like uh revving up for his like cage assaults like i know he's like a uh, picking better and better roles lately but this is uh this is definitely one of those ones in between (laughs) he's gonna pay pay the mx bill yeah yeah those dinosaur heads aren't gonna pay for themselves man